I'm Alessandro Satin. I'm in charge for export in Castello Monterinaldi, and I would like to show you the trip, the journey I made when I joined the company a few months ago, because I'm originally from Tuscany. I was born in Tuscany uh, a long time ago. Uh, well, I'm joking, not, not, not such a long time ago, but uh, when I came in Chianti Classico area, I discovered a full world. I say that I, I'm from Tuscany, so I know what Chianti is. I know all the villages from here, but my knowledge was uh, not as deep as it is now. Uh, why that? Because the Chianti Classico is a real world. It's a whole world, a complex world, and something very uh, amazing, something um, such a, so interesting to discover. I know that a lot of you had not the possibility to uh, make real trips during last summer. Let's hope this summer everybody will be able to travel again. But in the meanwhile, we want to make you this journey with us. Just a couple of technical, let me say, information I'd like to share with you. Um, the first one is the question and answer. If you have any kind of question, please, please use the uh, chat and me or Fabrizio will answer you at the end of the, of the presentation. And the other one is that we, we love you and we want to record uh, all these uh, meetings. So uh, there's the Beatrice, you will not see her, but you see her under the turtle uh, is recording this website and so it will be available on our social on our channels so uh, available on youtube instagram uh, facebook linkedin uh, please follow us if you are not doing it uh, till, till now but uh, it's an amazing journey so uh, let's start this journey because i said we beg we, we we will begin from the big when i say big i mean Toscany, not so big, but big enough. And the first thing I'd like to underline is the differences between the Chianti and the Chianti Classico uh, wines and so the production zone. It may be a little bit confusing. Uh, if you don't know exactly the difference, the differences between Chianti and Classico, Chianti and Chianti Classico, it's not your fault. Why? Because the first part is that Chianti is the originally the name of the area, the geographic area where we are, included between Siena and Florence. Siena South, Florence North, we are exactly in the middle between the two cities. So the wine produced here originally was named Chianti, but during the year, the production zone uh, became bigger and bigger because of the demand, because of the markets became bigger and bigger. So the, um, the, the, the consortium allowed to make Chianti even in other areas, in, even in other um, provinces, including Arezzo, Pisa, and so on. But the original producer from the Chianti area decided to uh, to, 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 to split the two consortium. And today, Chianti Classico wine can be produced only in the Chianti area between Siena and Florence. Chianti wine can be produced in uh, all the gray part you see on the map, but not in the Chianti area. So it may be confusing, but there's one thing that may help you to easy understand uh, and the first impact you can understand it, and it's the logo of Chianti Classico, the famous black rooster. Probably you already know the black rooster. You already have or you had uh, some battles with the black roosters on it. It may be on the neck, it may be on the black on the back label, but there's no Chianti Classico uh, without black rooster. And of course, let me say there's no black roosters black rooster without Chianti Classico. Uh, from this slide, you can see a couple. I just want to be uh, focused on a couple of differences between Chianti and Chianti Classico. 
The first one is the minimum Sangiovese quantity allowed in, uh, in the wine. For Chianti Classico, the minimum quantity of Sangiovese is 80%, 80. It's 70 for the Chianti. It means that Chianti Classico must have a higher quantity of uh, Sangiovese inside. Honestly, the biggest part of producers use higher percentage than 80% of Chianti Classico, like, like Monterinaldi, like we, we do uh, our Chianti Classico with more than 80%. The other important, well, all of them are important, but the other important thing I'd like to underline is that the, no white grapes are allowed for Chianti Classico. In Chianti, you can find a little percentage of white grapes, uh, the typical grapes from here, like Malvasia, Trebbiano, so on, but absolutely no white grapes for Chianti Classico. Uh, standard Chianti Classico is done by uh, Sangiovese and uh, uh, local grape like Canaiolo or others, but no less than 80%. So forget the Tuscany for a moment and let's go to focus on the smaller part. I remember you, uh, we said we start from big, we go smaller and smaller. And the small part I'd like to show you today is the Chianti Classico production zone. I already mentioned there are two city, cities, capital of the Chianti Classico, and the, and the names are easy, Florence and Siena. So both amazing cities. I hope you had the opportunity to visit them, are rich of history, rich of uh, um, human heritage and uh, knowledge. But the first way to split the Chianti Classico uh, area is the political ways. So there are eight municipalities in Chianti Classico. Four of them are entirely included in the production zone. And uh, uh, the names are Greve in Chianti, Radda in Chianti, Castellina in Chianti, Gaiola in Chianti. As you can see, all of them have, has, have the name and then in Chianti, just because these are the four municipalities, I repeat, entirely included, included in the uh, production zone. The other four are San Casciano Val di Pesa, Barberino Tavarnelle, Poggi Bonzi e, and Castelnuovo Berardenga. I say a, in Italian, sorry, but I can understand the names may be a little bit longer to remember and so on, but as instance, we are in Radda and Chianti, but when we talk about the village, we say Radda, or we just say, uh, Castelnuovo or Barberino, it's easier, it's faster. But anyway, the complete nom names are, um, are the one I just said. Uh, but the political way is not always the best way to split the, the land and the territory. Because a characteristic of the Chianti area is the great variability we can find different shades of soil, climatic and altimetric situation, uh, so different from each other. Um, even in a, in a few uh, meters, we can say, or maybe kilometers, uh, but able to create an, uh, a real universe. You can see from the picture here, in a space included in a few kilometers, you can find such a different, um, different soils. In orange here, you can see the boulder, the Il Massiccio del Chianti, it's in Italian, that's the Chianti boulder. But maybe the most famous is the Marley limestone, like Galestro and Alberese. Uh, but all of these different situations are linked by the vine called Sangiovese, as I said before, because it's the uh, you, will, uh, you will hear this word often during this meeting and to this webinar, because Sangiovese is absolutely the king of the grape uh, from the central part of Italy, especially in Tuscany, because it uh, is able to express the soil and to um, grow in a different way according to the soil where it's grown. 
just see how a Sangiovese from Rada can be different from a Sangiovese from Greve or, uh, or another village or another soil and so on. And even inside the same company, the same winery, you can find uh, differences even just in the same vineyard. And we will discover it better uh, later. But let me tell you something about the, uh, the, the soil and the characteristic and when the Chianti area uh, was formed. It was formed by three million years ago during the Pliocene, when there was the greatest extension of the sea over Tuscany. The lands that emerged at the time are the sandy clay ones, while the submerged one were the organic calcareous soils. Uh, you know that Italy is a pretty young uh, territory, young, of course, in geological um, ages, not in uh, uh, human ages. But it's exactly in that phase when the Chianti boulder, Massiccio del Chianti, as I said before, is formed with layers of different materials, compacted one on the top of the other to form the, the boulder. Uh, <coughs> sorry. And this material is often used also for um, in the Renaissance architecture. If you have been here, if you had the opportunity to, to be here in, in the past, a lot of the building you have seen in the villages in the city is done with the rocks coming from the Massiccio del Chianti. As I said, the clay calcareous soil is rich uh, in alberese and marla, and the, 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 the vine, where the vine finds the balanced soil and the root can go deep. Uh, and you know that the grape give its best when the vine is able to go deep, to go down and down. Another important thing is the difference in altitude. Just consider that altitude is between 200 meters, uh, 600 feet, to 900 meters. The tallest mountain is 900 meters or 300 feet. It doesn't mean that the grape is cultivated at 300 feet, but the difference is such a uh, huge difference. Also, the slight inclination of the Chianti Hills are optimal because of the, um, the, 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 the because it gives the best exposure to the sun, to the winds, and the thermal variation between day, night, and summer, winter. But we will see it better when we go to talk about uh, Radda and Chianti. Next step in our journey from big too small. But I already mentioned the Alberese, the Marley limestone, that's the uh, translation, is very common in, uh, in Chianti. But there, on the other hand, the soil rich in flakes or schistosis uh, or galestro derived from the finer sediments. Galestro and Alberese are two. Uh, are the, maybe the two main, main, most famous uh, rock and soils here in Chianti. So, as you can see, Chianti Classico has a very variable soils, even at a distance of a few meters, which is why the geological map, as you can see from the screen, looks like a dense, uh, somebody call it a patch, patchwork, because it's very a complex and it doesn't follow the, um, the, the, the political border. So uh, inside the, each municip municipality, inside Radda, you can find different soils. In can, inside Greve too, you can find different soils and so on. Another important thing about uh, Chianti is that, of course, we talk about wine. We love wine and we could spend all day long talking and drinking wine, but Chianti Classico is, uh, is not only a territory of wine production. 50% uh, of the Chianti Classico territory is occupied by woods, but it's also very rich 
in uh, biodiversity. There is a huge uh, presence of flora, of fauna here. But I guess you also know the extra virgin olive oil, DOP, from Chianti Classico. Because, and we too, we in Monte Rinaldi too, have, we also have a um, big part of olive trees. Just because, as I said, we uh, love to and we want to care about the territory and give its best. So, one more fast step. Uh, this slide is quite fast, but just to show you that often uh, the olive trees and the vineyards live side by side. There's not a, a, a separation. In the picture, there's a road, there's a, well, a white street. It's not a road, it's almost a track because uh, we, we, we cultivate them almost side by side, even in, Chianteri, in, Monte, in Monte Rinaldi, and you will see it later. Let's go again deeper in the small part and let's go to talk about Radda e Chianti. You can see here a map of the Radda territory because as for the Chianti classical area, is a patchwork, uh, I like this expression, of different soils. But let me say something and let me tell you something about the villages, the village of Radda, because Radda is a spectacular, is a lovable medieval village with defensive walls. It's located on the top of the hill of uh, uh, hard rock. Somebody says the, hard of, the, 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 sorry, the rock of Radda is hard as the Radda people had. Um, and the, the hill divided the valleys of Arbia and Pesa, the two smaller rivers uh, uh, here. Uh, the origins of Radda and Chianti uh, can be uh, can be found in the ninth century. So we are talking about eight hundred to nine hundred after uh, Anno Domini. But the first official document where Radda and Chianti is uh, mentioned is in the year one thousand and two. So one zero zero two. Uh, let me tell you one more thing that to its typical medieval aspect and so characterized, ca ca characterized by narrow street and classic tower building of the period is added the traditional Tosca charm of local stone facades. Like I just, I just said before, because imagine in the middle age or so on, uh, the, the, the building were built with the traditional and the local stones. So according to the things I just said, there's no wonder if in the past Radda was the capital of the Lega del Chianti. Lega del Chianti can be, there's not a translation, maybe Chianti, Chianti legacy, but I'm not sure about it in English, but it was a sort of army to protect the borders the Chianti area, I mean, border from uh, invasion because the soil here is so rich, so beautiful, full of um, animals, full of uh, trees, full of life, that a lot of invasions uh, try to, um, sorry, there is the light uh, coming and going away, but everything is fine. Um, and today, Rada is still one of the most important villages for the production of Chianti Classico. Today we can say that the wines coming from Radda or Radda in Chianti are the most elegant expression of Chianti Classico. You probably, if you are used to drink Chianti Classico, as I hope you are, at, or no, sorry, I changed my words. I'm sure you are used to drink Chianti Classico, and so you know that the expression of Chianti Classico can be very different for the reason I just told you before, because the territory is very different, the altitude can be uh, so different. So, as I mentioned, Radda has the 
all territories has a big range of soils and big range of differences. Uh, why? Because even if it's not the municipality with the highest elevation on, on the sea level, uh, should be grave if I don't go wrong, but it's the one with the highest average altitude. It means it's the most hilly. And you know that the hills uh, are the, are, uh, are not, it's not, well, it's not flat and it, of course uh, it's not flat, but they give a different exposure to sun, exposure to uh, winds and different soils from the top of the hill and the bottom of, of the hill, the same hill, maybe we find two different soils. Another important thing is that the, uh, the temperatures, the climate here is very um, particular because it can go from minus five Celsius or 23 Fahrenheit in the winter to 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit in summer. But even on the hottest summer days, the temperature range day night is quite high. So the nights are often fresher, quite windy. And uh, so that's the best situation for the vines. Vines need give their best when the, there is a high difference in the temperature winter, summer, but also day and night. So let's take a further step towards the, towards the little. As I mentioned, we started from big, we go to small. And so let's say something about the, uh, just a part. We are exactly in the northern part of Radda and Chianti. We are close uh, with the border with Florence or Greve and Chianti, but we still are 100% uh, uh, not only uh, for the political splitting we have seen before, but also for the geological and um, how can I say territory uh, splitting. We are 100% inside the Radda territory. Motorinaldi was founded in 1961 from the father of the actual owner. It's a family business and it's still owned by the same family from the first day of the foundation. I say in 1961, it means we are going to celebrate 60 years during 2021. So um, we, we will celebrate it for sure. We care about the land and we don't have only uh, vines, only vineyards because 50 hectares, one and 25 acres are uh, cultivated with grape. The other one we have, as I mentioned before, we have olive trees for the olive oil. We have wood. Uh, we have a small lake. Uh, we have different kind of uh, productions. We care about the land and we use the organic farming. We got the certification in 2018 but honestly, it was not so hard for us to get the certification because it was, I don't know exactly how many years, I, I don't know if from the beginning or not, but we already work with the uh, following the organic farming rules. So it was not so, uh, so difficult to get the certification. But I said before more than one time that even in the 50 hectares we have, you can find different soils. And so could we vinify all the 50 hectares together because the result is always the same? Of course, the answer is no. In 2009, the, the agronomist and enologist Mauro Bennati, he's with us uh, starting from 1995, I guess, uh, he, four or five, should be 95. Uh, so he's going to be here from uh, 26 years, decide to start the viticulture zonation. Viticulture zonation may look, uh, uh, may looks to be, um, may look, sorry, to be uh, an innovation and in part it is an innovation, but it also 
uh, going back to the tradition because the, in the tradition, each vineyard was different from the other and was vinified separately. Then, of course, you know that the, the, the uh, sellers need to uh, adjust the production and start to vinify all the production together. Now we went back to the tradition. We like to see we went back to the future, but it's a sentence I didn't even. Uh, I, I don't have the, 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 the patent on this uh, sentence. We went back because Mauro Bernati found that even in the very close uh, vineyards, we, uh, we could find different exposure, different soil, different clones. Today we have 18 different clones of Sangiovese. I didn't mention. Um, eighty-five percent of our uh, vines are Sangiovese, but with eighteen different clones. Existence, you can see here. I hope, uh, yeah, should be clear enough. Uh, the vineyard number eleven is the um, Monte Rinaldi is around eight hectare, and it's our. Uh, it's called Monte Rinaldi, like us, it means it's our one of our most important uh, part of production. But the second one, it's also the biggest one, but it, you can see how far is to the, um, to the uh, villa. Uh, may I ask you, Bea, to put, yeah, perfect. That's exactly where is the villa. So the 50 hectares are all surrounding the, the cellar and the villa. Another winery, uh, pardon, another vineyard, not the winery, is the Urliano Nuova, almost eight hectares, the number four. But the most important one, well, not the most important, all of them are important, but the number five is called Vigneto Boscone. Is uh, why I, I say it, even if it's not completely right, but uh, I hope you will forgive me for that. The Vigneto Bosconi is the oldest uh, vineyard we have with 40 years old vines. We also um, um, care about it because it's the highest, highest on the sea level. The villa uh, where, we, where I am now and where uh, I show you before uh, where it is, it's around 260 meters above the sea level. The top of the Vigneto Boscone is 470 meters. So you can see how close these two parts are, but there are 200 meters, maybe something more in uh, altitude and difference. So the soil is not the same, the winds are not the same, the exposure to sun is not the same. So Mauro found that the grape coming from the Vigneto Boscone was able to give up particular wine. Uh, such a particular one, and he decided to make the crew. But my part of introduction stop here because I'd like to call uh, Fabrizio because he will explain us something more about the Vigneto Boscone and then the wine coming from Vigneto Boscone. So we started from Tuscany, we are going to Smola and with Fabrizio we will go in a single vineyard and then inside a single bottle. Fabrizio. Thank you very much, Alessandro. Beautiful explanation. Uh, I really uh, hope and I'm sure that everyone uh, uh, have known uh, much more about Chianti area, Chianti class, sorry, sorry, Chianti classical area. Uh, so uh, this is Fabrizio. Hello, everybody. This is Fabrizio Benedetti, head sommelier here at Castello Monterinaldi. And um, maybe I have the, the hard job, uh, the tough uh, job of uh, uh, doing the tasting, and so tasting the wine. Uh, but uh, for sure, prior to, to go to taste the wine, uh, we are going later to, to taste this wine, which is, as Alessandro was saying before, is the, 
it's the Vigneto Boscone uh, single vineyard Chianti Classico 2016. And uh, but prior uh, the tasting, uh, I would like you to, uh, if you go with the slide, uh, uh, okay, that's perfect. I would like you to show you on the map on the, this picture uh, the uh, Vigneto Boscone. Vigneto Boscone is uh, translated in English as uh, uh, Boscone Vineyard. As, Al as uh, Alessandro was saying before, um, we have been able to identify, uh, you know, 17 different uh, uh, vineyards of Sangiovese in the property. Uh, so with 17 different uh, uh, terroirs, um, for sure, uh, one of the most important and maybe the best uh, or one of the best uh, vineyards of San Giovese we have in the property is the uh, one uh, that you see pointed out, uh, outlined with the purple color uh, in the picture. That's exactly the Vigneto Boscone. So as you can see from the slides, it's the, uh, one of the oldest vineyards uh, we have in the property. 1988 it was planted. So as uh, Alessandro was saying before, very deep roots. Uh, um, so the time, uh, uh, the time helps uh, for sure uh, the, 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 the roots to penetrate uh, uh, down deep in the soil. So these are for sure vineyards uh, much more self-sufficient. Uh, uh, they are not depending uh, by, by what is going on outside with the weather conditions. So, so they, they are much more resistant. And of course, uh, 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 with the deep roots, uh, they are absorbing also much more, you know, minerality and, and, and much more nutrients uh, uh, compared to uh, young vines. So that's a very important thing to point out. Elevation, elevation, it's 460, 470 meters above sea level. So there is a wonderful, um, all this, this, you know, breeze and, and kind of, uh, even in the uh, hot summer, uh, breeze that uh, uh, helps, uh, you know, to, to avoid the humidity, fungus, uh, uh, so diseases in general. Um, that's very important. Uh, uh, I would say that is, it can be extended to all the area of, uh, to the old area of Radda, but especially in the highest elevation vineyards, uh, you can definitely uh, find these uh, uh, good grapes and healthy, uh, you know, grapes uh, with no humidity. Um, what I, I want to point out is even uh, the, the fact that, uh, I mean, looking at this, at this vineyard, which is the uh, vineyard actually number five uh, in the map, the Vigneto Boscone, it's actually, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's actually uh, a total of uh, uh, five, six uh, hectares uh, in total. Uh, the, the wine that, uh, uh, so the Boscone we are going to try, in a moment, uh, uh, it actually does not come uh, from all the old area, the old vineyard that, that you see uh, pictured. Uh, it uh, comes only from a small uh, triangle, which is located at the very highest part of the of the plot uh, of this plot of Sangiovese, and uh, it's um, it's be it's because uh, the uh, soil composition is different. Uh, we can split uh, uh, in general the uh, vineyard of Boscone into two different uh, uh, parts uh, with two different uh, uh, soil uh, composition. The highest part uh, is much more uh, with the with the galestro. Uh, so um, yeah, that's right, uh, up there. Uh, a few rows, uh, uh, less than one hectare, uh, reaching uh, uh, in uh, Alberese, uh, while the lower uh, part of the vineyard, uh, of the vineyard number five, uh, is uh, uh, the Galestro. Galestro and Alberese, as Alessandro was uh, uh, 
uh, saying before, the Sangiovese, all the grapes, all the grape varieties in general, but especially the Sangiovese is very sensible, you know, to all what is the soil composition, the so-called uh, what is happening outside uh, in terms of weather conditions. So it's, uh, it's in one word, uh, the terroir. So this, the Sangiovese is very sensible. So this is why the, even uh, considering the highest part, uh, the, 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 the triangle, I was uh, from, uh, from where the Boscone comes, comes from and the lower part, uh, there is uh, a, actually a different uh, uh, wine coming uh, and with different characteristics. Um, so we decided in 2015, uh, uh, due to the fact uh, that uh, in general, in terms of soil composition, we have much more, uh, considering all the the, the different vineyards, we have much more uh, the galestra, which is a schistus, uh, and not that much uh, of uh, uh, alberese, which is uh, in general much more insisting in the, in the higher elevation vineyards. We decided uh, to uh, make uh, a Chianti Classico uh, just from there uh, to uh, enhance, uh, you know, the characteristics of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, part of the uh, Vigneto Boscone. So 2015 uh, has been uh, our first uh, vintage uh, produced of the Boscone. So today we are going to try 2015, which is of course is sold out now. Uh, I mean, we still have, uh, of course, uh, enough bottles uh, in our <laughs> Uh, uh, personal private cellar here at the winery, but uh, uh, the vintage we are going to try uh, today is the 2016, which is actually the uh, second vintage ever produced uh, of the uh, Vigneto Boscone. Uh, the uh, production uh, stays, uh, total production of this wine stays uh, around 3,800 bottles, 4,000 bottles maximum per year. So uh, it's a, it's a, actually a very small production, uh, and, um, and let's uh, let's have a look at the at the at the label where you can you can see printed the, in red uh, the Vigneto Boscone. So it's a, it, it's actually as I said it's a crew single vineyard. It's a hundred percent of Sangiovese, uh, so pure Sangiovese. There there are no other grape varieties mixed here uh, together with the Sangiovese. Uh, the grapes, uh, uh, the good grapes uh, coming from this part of, of this plot of, of uh, Boscone ha have to uh, uh, talk uh, uh, by themselves uh, and not with other, you know, influences of uh, other grape varieties uh, at all. Uh, they, uh, I have to say that also this wine uh, uh, didn't uh, and do, uh, does not touch uh, the oak, uh, so it's very interesting. Uh, the fact that uh, it's a uh, hundred percent pure Sangiovese fermented in uh, uh, concrete uh, vats, and even and also matured in uh, concrete uh, vats. So th there is no oak uh, influence here. Okay, so I would say that uh, that's the perfect time. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, 5:45 here in Tuscany. It's a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, end of the afternoon. It has, it has been a very good, nice, uh, sunny day today. Uh, after five, six days, seven days, very cold. Uh, uh, quite strange for being March, uh, but finally. Now it looks like that we are going towards the, the springtime. I mean, according to uh, see, uh, according to today. Uh, okay, let's try. Let's try the wine. Um, I would love you to have the 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 bottle uh, with you. If you have it, uh, do it with me. And this is a beautiful sound, isn't it? Okay, so uh, have a look. Uh, have a look first of all uh, at the color. Maybe, maybe I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, 
I'll tell you. It's a, it's a very typical color of a pure Sangiovese grown on uh, uh, Alberese soil. Uh, so what, what does this mean? Uh, Sangiovese has, uh, yeah, let's say, Pinot Noir, first one, uh, first one great variety comes to my mind. But as Pinot Noir, for example, it's, it does not have uh, uh, a, a rich, deep uh, color. It's a, it's a light color. So you're not going to get a Sangiovese or a Pinot Noir or even a Barbera, for example, staying in Italy uh, with, a, with a very deep, rich color that could, could be, a, I don't know, a Syrah, for example, or maybe a Cabernet Sauvignon. So light color, uh, but uh, uh, nice uh, ruby, brilliant uh, color. Okay, so what I'm expecting here is something uh, nice with, with a nice freshness. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting a crunchy, uh, nice fruity, but we will see. First of all, the nose. <laughs> that was, uh, that exactly was what uh, I was expecting. The first, the very first impact uh, right now, uh, it's, uh, first of all, it's the intensity, which is, uh, so it's, it's very, extremely powerful. It comes uh, suddenly uh, touching my nose and reaching my nose. Uh, so it, I, I, I can say that it's, it's really an intense nose. And in terms of memories, uh, the first uh, uh, family cluster I can detect is the floral nose for sure. So floral nose, uh, the rose uh, bushes, the, the violet, uh, for example. Uh, but as soon after, as soon after the, the floral, uh, this beautiful crunchy uh, red uh, fruity coming through. So it's the cherry, which is uh, very clear and neat uh, by the nose, but, uh, but uh, it's not enough. It's not enough. So let's say, do you remember 2016? 2016 vintage. So this is not a nose of uh, a young wine. This is a nose of a wine. Uh, uh, don't misunderstand me. It's not an old wine. This is a wine that has a, a shelf life which can go for another 10, 12 years with no problem. It's still a baby. But uh, by the nose, uh, you can definitely tell uh, that is a nice, uh, that is recognizable, a nice evolution of the wine in the bottle. So in addition to the aging in the concrete, the maturation in the concrete after, soon after the fermentation and the vinification, there is also an evolution uh, of this Sangiovese, beautiful Sangiovese in the bottle. So it starts to come out uh, a nice uh, mm, spicy, so nice spicy notes, uh, uh, kind of, you know, leather, uh, tobacco memories, uh, mm, hearty uh, memories. And these are all typical uh, uh, memories of uh, uh, recognizable in a Sangiovese, which uh, has been uh, matured and aged for a little bit, a while. Okay, 60, 2016, uh, so we are talking about uh, a wine which is now five, six years old. Eh? So it's, uh, it's a nice uh, complexity. That's a, a beautiful complex nose. Uh, we have uh, recognized many, many, uh, I mean, at least four different families, uh, floral, uh, 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 fruity, uh, spicy, earthy, uh, minerality kind of. So it's a, it can be a, a judged as a, as a as a complex nose. Let's go to, to try now the wine. So the, the acidity, um, this kind of mouth watering, the freshness um, of the Sangiovese, very typical, uh, the tannins, uh, which are 
beautiful, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful tannin, tannins uh, uh, texture. Beautiful tannins te texture, which uh, for sure tell, tell us uh, many things about the, how the 2016 vintage has been. It was a very good year. I, I forgot to tell you, 2016 was the, was the vintage, okay? Especially here in Chianti Club. And you can definitely tell from the, from the tannin texture. texture. These uh, tannins are the mirror of a perfect uh, maturation uh, of the grains. And this is uh, exactly what uh, happened in 2016. Um, so was talking about the acidity, the tannins. This is not a wine to go alone. Okay, so uh, you don't see here, but I have here down here a beautiful uh, Florentine steak. No, I'm joking. I would like to. Anyway, uh, uh, this is a, this is a wine which has to go with the food. Uh, it's not uh, it's not a merlot which is soft and round uh, this is this has character acidity tannins uh, so perfectly perfectly food a, per, a perfect food wine okay so do not uh, uh, consider the chianti classico in general i'm not talking just about the 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 vigneto boscone but consider the chianti classico as the perfect food wine so always sit at the table and uh, have something to eat with good friends uh, and have a bottle or two bottles of Chianti Classico together with the food. The uh, Florentine steak I mentioned, but even uh, some uh, very good uh, uh, cheeses in general, uh, Parmigiano cheese, uh, uh, Pecorino cheese from, uh, uh, Pecorino from Pienza, for example, aged for five, six, seven months uh, with a little bit of, uh, you know, more, uh, I mean, stronger uh, taste. Uh, that, that, that is gonna be a perfect pairing for sure, in addition to the, to the steak. The uh, uh, complexity by the taste is really evident, is really evident. It's a, it's a wine with a, nice, uh, with a nice structure, with a nice body. And uh, the aftertaste is, uh, is really very, very, very long. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I had a sip uh, uh, two, three minutes ago and I still have my, uh, you know, fruity and floral and earthy memories uh, in, the, in, my, in my mouth. So it's a, it's a beautiful uh, expression of Sangiovese, beautiful expression of Sangiovese. Again, still, uh, uh, a wine that uh, can be uh, kept uh, uh, and aged for a while in the bottle. So I have finished. Uh, uh, go back. Uh, I think uh, we can go back uh, to Alessandro. Cheers. Uh, and uh, and if questions are coming, uh, we are we will be very very happy you know to answer to all absolutely questions. fabrizio thank you very much for your explanation for your explanation i uh, i guess everybody who listens to you uh, now needs a glass of good wine hey. but yes there are a few questions i'd like to start and if, if all of you who are listening um, have any other question of course uh, just let us know I start with the first question. I guess I can answer. It's uh, the uh, question received from Astrid um, asking, may I ask why the ones from Rada are more elegant, as you mentioned? Uh, well, yes. Um, uh, why are more elegant? Because the, I think there are several uh, uh, reasons about it. The first I'd like to say is the uh, soil of the uh, and the, the cultivation in Radda, because almost the 50% of the territory is uh, cultivated in wood. So it's wood. Well, uh, the microclimate here is very particular with a high uh, temperature range, higher than the other part. And so the acidity of grape uh, give its best. The higher acidity comes when the 
different uh, temperature between day and night. Also, the steep slope, slopes of the, the area uh, let the water go away um, and the, 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 the vine suffer, the vine uh, uh, suffer. Yeah, and so it's able to give its best. That's why I say it more elegant. Of course, it doesn't mean that the wines from Rad are better than the others, because all the producers are able, almost all the producers are able to produce good wines. It's just that the wines can have different characteristics. And in uh, our opinion, the Radda producers are able, thanks also to the hilly territory, to give its best in elegance. Uh, ta -ta -ta, uh, cool. ah, Frank asked us, could you explain what is Vignaioli di Radda? Okay, yeah, he corrected with Radda. Uh, yes, sure. It's an association done by 24 different producers, all of them in Radda, to, um, with the goal to elevate, to increase the quality production, the name of Radda, uh, also the impact on the territory. Consider that, I don't know exactly how many, but a high percentage of them operate in the, the, following the organic uh, rules. So, uh, the agricultural impact on the environment must be acceptable. You know that today the uh, green uh, part of the each company is always day and day uh, daily important. So uh, the Vignaioli di Radda is a cooperation of 24 different producers. Fabrizio, there's a question for you. Yeah, um, I'm so happy. I'm, I was just reading the question. It's a, it's a, it's a good friend who came here. I, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry with him because... Two, uh, 2018, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello, yeah. world. Yeah, so nice. You gave me... Nice. Sorry. Yeah, you gave just, me, you gave, perfect. you gave my family and me a memorable tour and tasting in, I believe, 2018. The winery is very lovely. Grazie. I was wondering, uh, are there other major wine producers in Radda and Chianti? Yes, there are. Uh, the... uh, Fabrizio, sorry, as I mentioned, the Vignaioli di Radda, there is a website. Of course, don't ask us to say other <laughs> No, 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 name. we're not going to say. But... <laughs> <laughs> just us, just us. On the website, Vignaioli di Radda, yeah, you can exactly. find all the information. But exactly. let me take the link with this question. I really love this question yeah. because... There is now a promotion, even on our website, monterinaldi.it, you can find the Radda box. It's a box done by one bottle for the different producers. We said we are 24 producers, Vignaioli di Radda. You can choose the box you prefer with different producers. Uh, so you can check by them. If you go, it's in promotion now till Sunday or... Yeah, okay, till next Sunday. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, monterinaldi.it and you can discover the Radda box. Yeah, thank you, Alessandro, for, uh, for uh, uh, th uh, this information. Uh, um, it's, um, it's, it's for sure a, a, a good occasion to have a, a um, you know, the, 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 a view, a general view of, the, of all the, 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 the wineries from Radda. Uh, we were joking before with Alessandro, but uh, um, of course we are the best. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there are uh, there are all the other all the other no, uh, wineries are, are are doing very good job. Uh, the Radda area is a is a great area for uh, uh, growing the Sangiovese. So it's uh, it's really high Absolutely. high Absolutely. quality wine. That's there is cool. also two. There are also two questions from Cristina. I answered the first one. You answered the second one, uh, Fabrizio. The first one: Do you have a list of where you export to in uh, the U.S.? Uh, well, actually, we have a distribution in the U.S., but uh, we are uh, increasing our uh, distribution. So 
uh, Christina, if you or if you can send us in private, uh, not in public chat, your uh, contact, I will provide you the list, or maybe we can talk directly. As I said in the beginning, in my introduction, I'm in charge for export. So if you are, a, I don't know if you are a professional buyer or if you are a wine lover and you you just want to buy, but anyway. Um, we will let you know as soon as possible. Fabrizio, did you say, uh, oops, I missed, did you hey. say it's sold out or just the Fat Vintage here? Hey, Christina, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you a good, a good news. Uh, I, I, I said that it's sold out the 2015 Vintage, uh, but it's not sold out, uh, it's not sold out uh, the 2016. So 2016 Vintage is still, uh, is still uh, it's still available it's still available there are not of course uh, uh, i mean such a, a big uh, quantity uh, available but uh, but it's still available so no no problem no problem absolutely okay so uh, do you still provide the winemaker for a day program fabrizio it's your son the <laughs> winemaker for a day so up to you <laughs> Yeah, we do. We do so, Kenneth. We do so, and uh, unfortunately, uh, 2020, uh, we didn't, uh, of course, have the chance to do it. Uh, but it's still, uh, uh, it's still our uh, top uh, program uh, in the listed in the in the in the uh, list of uh, general list of the of the, all the events uh, we're offering. So we. We still do it, uh, absolutely. We have done uh, uh, many during the year. We started uh, actually in, um, I think it, it was uh, 2012 or 2013. So really at that time, um, uh, it was a kind of a gamble uh, because we didn't know if people uh, would have appreciated it, uh, but uh, uh, we have been very satisfied by the by, by the results of this uh, incredible program. Uh, people uh, that came uh, and did the Waymaker for a day are uh, going to reorder uh, their own blends, uh, their own cases, because we have on files on file all the different blends of all the people that came here since uh, 2012, 2013. So. Uh, yeah, answering qu your questions, absolutely, yes. Okay, I also can read a lot of uh, very nice comments and uh, chat. Uh, grazie for the nice presentation. I have a bottle of 2015 Vigneto Boscoli. It was the first production, so keep it uh, in my cellar for my, from my visit in 2019. Uh, Rad and Castello Monterino Aldi are beautiful. Thank you so much. I special thanks to John because, uh, oops, uh, sorry about uh, messages, uh, who says buy right from their website. Super easy, done it multiple times. So it's our sponsor. Thank you very much, John. Also, uh, Gary who says thank you for the great presentation. So excited to be representing you in Toronto. Thank you very much. Uh, Gary, but it's our pleasure to be represented in um, in Toronto. Uh, Thank Mark, you, Gary. Great Sorry. discussion today. I would also like to see location for purchase in the U.S. Okay. Thank you very much. I have seen the ones that retail store in San Francisco are. Well, I cannot read all of them. Christina, we received your private uh, message. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks from Calgary, Alberta. Uh, Wow. Absolutely. Wine Access, the excellent web provider. Great presentation. Thank you. Oh, well, well uh, we, all, we, would love, we would like to thank you all for being here today. Uh, do you plan to make Boscone a Gran Selezione? Ah, okay. There's another question from, uh, yes, Scott Balmer. Fabrizio? Do you plan uh, to, to make, make Boscone a grand selection? A grand selection. That, that's a good question. That's a good question. I uh, I, I don't think now. I mean, we are uh, most likely going to make a grand selection uh, in the I think in a in a short time. But uh, Boscone was born uh, as a crew uh, as uh, as a Vigneto Boscone Chianti Classico. 
and I'm pretty sure it will stay uh, Chianti Classico Vigneto Boscone, not Gran Selezione. So we are most likely going to have four uh, different, uh, in the next future, four different uh, Chianti Classicos, uh, the Classico Annata, the Classico Reserva, the Classico Boscone, and uh, the new Gran Selezione, which is most likely coming out. Maybe it looks to be year. such an interesting news you gave to the to the audience tonight. So I really, we, we, we plan to stay together for 40 minutes or so on. Um, it's almost more than one hour we are talking. We could spend all night long staying here talking about uh, us reading your question, answering your question, but I think it's really time to go. So, uh, Thanks to everybody, not only from me, Alessandro, but also from all the staff who care about us today. Uh, Beatrice, who managed everything. This one also, uh, of course, Mauro Bennati, as I mentioned before, the agronomist, but special thanks to the owner, Daniele, uh, Daniele Ciampi, and all the staff working in Monterinaldi, but especially all our clients because without you we are nothing and so that's why i want to really thank you everybody for being here today with us for love our wines for taste our wine for try the new vintages the new wines and so on. we have a lot of news if you follow us on social as i mentioned before you will be updated about our new release of our new vintages new wines and so on we have a lot of uh, news coming on. So, thank you very much again. Fabrizio, grazie anche a te. Grazie. Uh, see you next time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody. Ah, and you can see again the video on the, on the social. Bye-bye. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye -bye.